Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and this is video number 31 in the CD CK2024. In this video, we'll be looking into core DNS concepts like how DNS works in Kubernetes. And if you are not aware about the DNS concept in general, not just specific to Kubernetes, but DNS in general, how it works, what happens when you type www.google.com in your web browser. I would highly recommend watching the previous video, day 30 video, in which an amazing content creator uh, and my friend Piyush Garg had shown us end-to-end -end explanation of how it works in the simplest possible language. So feel free to check that out. If you are aware of that concept, uh, you can continue with this video about DNS in Kubernetes. And the comments and like target of this video will be 100 likes, 100 comments. It's the lowest possible target that I have set. So I'm sure you can do it. And without any further ado, let's start with the video. So let's start with a simple connectivity test to show you how DNS works in Kubernetes. I have deployed a couple of pods uh, in my default namespace. So one is Nginx pod, another one is Nginx one pod, and they both are using the same image as Nginx. And I have exposed these with the services as well. So if I do k get svc, I have two services. One is nginx that is exposing the nginx pod and nginx1 that is exposing the nginx1 pod. I have kept the same name just to uh, make you aware of the relationship between these pods and services. Okay. So ideally, when you like, we have seen that in services, namespace, and many other videos like services can talk to each other uh, with the help of their name, right? So for example, if there is an Nginx service, it should be able to directly talk to the Nginx one service and pods can also talk to each other, uh, pods can also talk to services and so on. So if I do k exec hyphen it Nginx, and if I run curl on Nginx one, what I'm doing is I'm doing exec into Nginx pod, and from there, I am doing a curl on Nginx one service because Nginx one will be a host name as it is a service. It should be able to return the results, right? So let's hit enter and it's getting terminated. The command is not successful. It's not returning the results. So what could be the issue? Uh, before that, let's see if it is something to do with the um, service name to the IP resolution because this service name or this host name is nothing but a DNS record, right? We have seen like the Piyush Kirk have already mentioned, told this before, like there are different record sets in, in DNS and it helps to map your IP to the host name, right? So this is one of those CNAME records you can consider. And over here, Nginx1 resolved to this IP address over here. So let's try to do a curl on this IP address instead of the service name. Okay. So this is returning the result. That means there is some misconfiguration in the DNS itself. DNS itself is not able to resolve service name to its host name or host name to its IP address. We have seen how DNS works. But how it works in Kubernetes? Kubernetes deploy a pod, actually a couple of pods with the name core DNS. And if this is like, if there is an issue similar to this, where you are able to reach the service with the IP address, but not with the host name or the service name, that means there is some issue with your DNS server itself. Okay. So DNS server, if I do k get pods hyphen n equal to cube system, in that there'll be a pod with the name core DNS. It's not here. So that means there is some issues with that because it is deployed as a deployment. If I do k get deploy on the cube system namespace, uh, here is our core DNS pod, but as you see, um, there are zero replicas available. So let's do one thing. Let's try to scale this k scale deploy. And the name is core DNS hyphen hyphen replicas equal to two. I'm sure you are aware of this command by now. We have used this multiple times. And then I'm going to pass the namespace name as well, which is cube system. So I am scaling this back to two replicas, which is what we get uh, when we do the installation of uh, Kubernetes core DNS comes with it. So I have scaled it. And if I do K deploy, it's getting ready. 
and it is ready now it is up and if i do kget pods now on the cube uh, cube system namespace i see there are two pods running for core dns okay so now our core dns is up let's see if i'm able to curl the nginx service name now okay i'm getting the reply back so that is what core dns does in general right it is a dns server uh, it provides you the functionality of domain name resolution with the service to ip name okay and it is like uh, we have seen the pods the deployment but it is exposed as a service as well and if you do k get svc hyphen n equal to cube system okay the service name is cube dns so don't get confused between core dns cube dns uh, are they different or are they same so core dns is the name of the dns service that we are using service as in the dns uh, tool that you are using or the dns server that we are using and cube dns is the kubernetes service with respect to core dns okay and this service is exposed on port 53 uh, that what's its use and uh, here is its cluster ip so if you do let's say if i exec into one of those pods k get exec uh, let's say nginx hyphen hyphen bash and um, we already know the file that is responsible for uh, the local dns resolution which is etc resolve.conf okay over here you will see some entries okay first is name server so this entry belongs to your dns server entry so whenever you create a new pod an entry automatically gets created in this particular file of that pod and which points the name server to 10.96.0.10 which is nothing but the service ip of the cube dns all right uh, i hope this is making sense now and over here because we can search the service with its uh, top level domain which is cluster.local or with the service.local and so on or with default service cluster local and so on so there is this search entry for that Okay, this is just adding some more aliases to the service name all right so this is the file responsible for that so make sure you uh, understand this file there could be some misconfiguration in this file as well but it's get automatically generated unless someone manually altered it okay so this is how we actually uh, check it now if we were not using this how it would have worked right so there is another file let's say it is etc hosts right so what you do is you actually add the address over here so let's say uh, this particular pod should be able to reach another pod okay so this was pod nginx and if i do the host name hyphen i like what is the ip of this this is 192 168 189 83 so this entry is already there in this file but if we were to reach another pod in the same network we could have added the entry of nginx1 over here as well but we don't need to do that because we are already using a dns server and dns is doing all that for us we don't have to manually add the entry in each of the pods that is being created because it will be you know an impossible task if we scale the server let's say let's say if, I, if it has 100 pods thousand services uh, many 100 nodes it is really an impossible task to do that if we were doing it manually but dns takes care of all of this for us okay so this is the central dns server uh, that we are using and this central dns server has a cluster ip which is obviously for the internal use and there is there'll be an entry in the etc resolve file for every single pod okay now let's see some important files of core dns so if we go back let's do an exit let's do a k get pods on the cube system namespace and i'm going to describe one of these core dns pods k describe pod hyphen n is cube system all right so if we go up you will see there are a couple of mount points one is uh, for the service account secrets that's okay the another one is etc core dns from config volume so there is another volume that's been attached and it is mounted to etc core dns let's see what's there in this config volume so here's the volume config volume and it has 
a type of config map with the name code DNS. That means we are mounting a config map as a volume to this pod. Okay, so let's see the config map. So I'm gonna enter k get config map hyphen name equal to cube system. Okay, we saw the name of the config map was core DNS. So if I'm gonna do k describe config map on the cube system namespace, this is what the file is basically. It has a core file. So there is a file named core file inside that config map and it has few plugins along with it. First is errors, health errors means it will redirect all the errors to STD error. Then it has health checks that lame duck. There is a certain tool that will do the health check of core DNS pod after five seconds, like similar to uh, the, uh, the health props. Then we have ready Kubernetes uh, cluster.local. So this is the top level domain of our Kubernetes cluster. That means your cluster would be reachable uh, with this address. And then we have IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Pods insecure, this plugin is for backward compatibility with kubedns, okay? And there are a few other details like Prometheus is exposed on uh, 9153 port. Like all the Prometheus metrics will be exposed on this port. And then we are also forwarding the traffic to etcresolve.conf, right? So this file that's been auto-generated for us, it will forward the traffic to that to route that traffic to the central DNS server, okay? So let's say when we mount this config map to a core DNS pod, the request comes to that and then it will check the entry in this file, okay? So this file will suggest that core DNS has a service attached to it with the IP 10.96. something something and it will redirect the traffic to that. And then uh, it will be doing the load balancing in a round robin fashion, uh, and so on, right? So whenever there is a change in config map, it will reload the configuration and so on. So this is an important file uh, when it comes to core DNS. Okay, so this file is, if we want to see the location of this file, I believe it should be, because it is mounted inside the core DNS pod, etc core file, I guess, but whatever we have seen, you can check the content from there as well. I believe this is what uh, we need to know from the core DNS perspective. Um, I'm sure, I have covered everything when it comes to that. What else you can do is you can check out um, the DNS document or DNS task that is there in the Kubernetes documentation section. I guess it will be over here. I'll paste that link in the GitHub repository. So, you know, uh, try to follow these steps as well. Implement a pod with this particular uh, DNS utils install and then try to do NS lookup. So basically this is doing a similar thing that we did uh, with the Nginx pod and it will uh, tell you what all files to check for, etc resolve uh, and then do the NS lookup again and so on and all the things that you need to check like uh, to check if the DNS is running, you check the pods, then you check the errors as well, you do kubectl logs. Uh, we have covered this uh, multiple times so I'm not covering it, how to check the logs for it, how to check the services up or not and are there any DNS endpoints exposed because it is exposed as a service. That means there'll be some endpoints exposed to it. And then this is the config map details uh, and it has all the details of what it does. It has cluster roles as well binded with it. And yeah, basically that's, that's all about it. So try to have a look at that, try to implement all those steps and um, I'm sure uh, this concept will be clear, like how DNS works. In in any case, if you feel like your core DNS is not coming up or you see the status as, uh, you know, uh, no pods available for core DNS, even if there are no errors or you have started it. So the issue could be related to your networking add-on because core DNS only works when there is a network add-on installed. So we have already K get pods if I do Let's do hyphen A. So we already have, if you see, we have Tigera operator, which is the operator that we have used to install Calico, right? So Calico is the networking add-on that we are using in this cluster setup. So if this networking setup was not installed because it does not come with the default Kubernetes installation, if it's not there, 
then your core DNS pods won't come up, right? So this is the first thing that you should be looking uh, if you are checking how do we do that. Now, there was an issue when I was installing the cluster, I somehow missed including that in the video, but let me tell you this now. When I was installing Calico, it worked fine on the kind cluster, but when we did on, on the Cube ADM cluster, it, it was not coming up because there were some issues with it. There are some open bugs with it, or there are some you know documentation uh, that we need to follow. First is if you are running it on AWS EC2 servers that you need to make sure that uh, where it is instances. Okay, I'm gonna just close the rest of the tab. Okay, over here, you need to make sure that select the instance, go to actions and then um, networking and enable this option, change source destination check. Okay, so I have currently uh, disabled it. So make sure you have disabled the source and destination check in all the VMs that are part of the cluster. Okay, that's one thing. It's there in the kind documentation as well, but it's not pretty straightforward clear. So I had to go through multiple documentation, multiple GitHub issues to understand this. So that's one thing. The other thing is uh, the daemon set that uh, is running behind the Calico node. So if I do k get daemon set hyphen n equal to Calico system. Okay, so Calico node, this daemon set, these three pods won't come up if you don't make this change. So what you have to do is you have to change something. So if I do k describe daemon set and hyphen n equal to cube system. Okay, I have misspelled it. Okay, and over here, you have to look for something called as IP auto detection. So it should be enabled. This uh, IP auto detection should be enabled. Yeah, I guess that was the only change that I did. So yeah, feel free to reach out if you're facing any issues with uh, with starting the Calico node, uh, this particular pods. If you're facing an issue, let me know and I'll try to help you because there are some ongoing issues with it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I have we have to do certain changes to your configuration based on which method you are using for the installation. It will work fine in the kind cluster. I guess it was just specific to AWS, but if you do the source destination check and all those things it should be good okay so that's uh, the only thing that i wanted to share um i hope this video was also beneficial and now you are able to understand what the core dns is what is cube dns how dns work in kubernetes and why do we actually need the local dns server in kubernetes okay so uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you soon with the next video. This was video number 31. I will see you again with video number 32, which is about what do we have in video 32? Uh, let me quickly check. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be looking into Kubernetes networking again. I have bought some amazing guests for it. So someone with a lot of experience with working with Kubernetes and teaching Kubernetes and who's been an amazing content creator associated with the CNCF namespace will be there to explain the Kubernetes networking concepts like CNI, network add-on, uh, run C, container runtime and all those concepts in detail. So uh, do not miss that video. And if you can guess the name, uh, please feel free to do that in the comment section. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you then with the next video. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good day.